Wow. I cannot believe uh, that it's already November. Where has this year gone? And we're already yeah, prepping for 2025. Um, and if you're sitting here being like, oh, my God, I don't know what I'm doing yet. Don't worry. It's fine. <laughs> you showed up the earliest you can show up. Um, this is the first event that we're doing for yeah. the 2025 season. And it's really just a brainstorm day to get your kind of juices flowing, to really be able to plan ahead in a, in a, in some sort of planned way, but you don't have to know what you're doing yet. Yeah. I will note though, like, uh, every year, cause we do this every year and every year, the ones that show up to this event are the ones that have a successful fringe journey. Like the ones that show up, it really changes the game. Uh, so congratulations on being in that group because every year we watch the people who show up to the creative series just excel. So yay. Uh, Lois and I are the co-executive okay. directors of Hollywood Fringe. Let's introduce uh, ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're a small team. Um, it is, yeah. um, we're the full-time staff and then we have a couple of part-time staff year round and then across, uh, closer to the festival, we become more expanded and we couldn't do anything without our venue partners. And so we really want to shout out Eastwood Performing yes, Arts Center. Yes, Calvin. And Calvin. Thank for- you. <laughs> Yay! For hosting us, and we'll be going to different events in different venues so that you can see them in the next couple of months, um, as well as there will be tours and things like that for you to be able to find the perfect space for you at Fringe. Uh, but if you are interested, if you're like, hot damn, this is a really cool venue, and I could see my show here, talk to Calvin at some point today, and he will tell you more about this amazing space. How many people in the room are new to Fringe? I have never read hey. ah! Welcome. Welcome to the family. <laughs> uh, it is uh, it is so much fun, uh, and it is really a great community. About ninety percent of our participants in our festival, which our festival last year was three hundred and eighty shows, um, are local to Los Angeles County. So um, this is one of these like kind of build it days where we are really here with our Los Angeles community talking things through. Uh, and these people in this room are your colleagues. These are the yeah. people that you'll be going through this with, but also through the rest of LA theater with. I'm sure that some of you have already met each other and uh, it is, I don't know. It's a small tight knit community, but it's also huge. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it. And and the festival, like what we do is a festival, right? At the end of the day, it, we are a platform to produce your show. Hi, come on in, y'all. Uh, we're a platform to produce your show. But I think more importantly, and what most people take away from this experience is the community. So like dive in. You can certainly take what you want from it, but I recommend diving in and really like immersing yourself in the festival and the community because it really does pay off. People come back year after year because the people they've met here, they go on and do things outside of the fringe entirely because of people they've met here. So like, remember, like it's one of those, your reputation is always five feet in front of you. Your reputation starts today in this community. And if you, you know, are a a strong community member, you will walk away from this with so much more than just having put your show up on a stage. Before we begin, I want to do a land acknowledgement. Yeah, we really jumped the gun and, had, and did not follow our... No, no, we're our fine. Oh, okay, good. Right. No, I'm looking at it. We're, we're good. We're online. Um, we're online. The Hollywood Fringe is... Uh, I'd like to start off with a land acknowledgement this morning. Um, the Hollywood Fringe acknowledges that we're on the unceded lands of the Tongva, Quiche, Gabrielinos, and Gabrielinos people. This statement serves as a practice as we commit to furthering our connections with Indigenous communities past, present, and emerging. Um, for more information on why we do this and um, about the land that you're on right now, you can go to hollywoodfringe.org forward slash land. Um, and we have lots of resources there for you to do some research. Yeah. Today's going to be a, a really quick, tight overview just to give you some like preference or um, some uh, some concepts going into today's creative focus. Context. Context. Thank you. I'm so tired, y'all. <laughs> um, I, but I know her, so I know what she was trying to say. It's <laughs> a, a word. Um, it's a whole day about writing, so I'm going to get it together by the end. Um, but remember, mm-hmm. so we're going to kind of touch on just the basic like ideas of the festival, but we're going to have a workshop, a article, a town hall. We're going to have something for every step of the process. So no, right now, this little 20 minute chat is just to kind of wrap your brain around how the process works, uh, which is pretty simple. There's three steps to be a part of Hollywood Fringe. Create a project on the Hollywood Fringe website, book a venue in the Hollywood Fringe zone and register with the festival. That's it. From there, it's a self-produced show, but you're doing it alongside community. We're going to say that over and over again throughout this next year. Uh, you're not alone. So yes, you are self-producing, but you are not having to figure out all of the pieces by yourself. We're going to provide a toolkit. We're going to provide the knowledge share, and then you'll have a community of people who will be there alongside you. 
We want to talk through some of the resources that are available to you because I think that that is one of the most, um, when you're starting this, it can be the most overwhelming part. We are in the process of redoing our website. Um, and so if you're like, wow, this website is really complicated and confusing. It is. It is. <laughs> um, but we have some ways for you to be able to go through it right now as we're developing. And then be, when we register, Launch registration in February is when we're going to have a new website. Glow up. <laughs> so um, it will look a little bit different, but all the information is going to remain the same um, and all the links will remain the same. So the first thing that is really important to know is that you have this like online packet called the participant packet, which breaks it down into every step. This year's participant packet is not up yet because you don't really have to worry about that much until you've written your show. And our goal is to have that up for registration launch in February. And that's when you have to really start thinking about things like, where am I marketing to? What is this? But when it comes to budgeting, we have a budgeting workshop that will be happening in the spring. But right now, we also have a budgeting blog up there. If you go to the, the Hollywood Fringe homepage, there's an artist's um, tab. You like, we'll click on that for artist resources and it'll bring you to this whole thing where you'll have the participant packet list, uh, listed there, potential budgets so that you can be able to start to put together your own. We have resources there like the supportal, which goes into like the history of what we've been doing and you can kind of learn more about things. We have our annual report there, which is where you can go and look back and see how how the last fringe kind of like went down. <laughs> you can have like the demographics. You can also look at like what categories were the most popular. Um, what was the average ticket price sold versus what was the average ticket price listed at? Um, the average house sold. The, uh, yeah, like highly recommend hollywoodfringe.org forward slash annual report. We've just released our 2024 annual report and it's 16 pages of just research, uh, which we all know is people, right? The best, we're going to have the best success if we do our research, if we plan ahead. So please use those numbers on what has happened last year to plan your adventure this year. And then you're like, okay, that's like a lot of stuff. Uh, don't worry. We literally break it down into this type of digestible yeah. information session. So we have town halls, which is where Lois and I just go, blah, 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 and talk to you about all the exactly. changes that are coming out, um, just like we are right now. And everything that we say out loud is in this participant packet. Um, and you can kind of have that visual, that visual way of doing it, as well as that like kind of in-person ask questions kind of way of doing it. We also have workshops, which are the other things that we're doing today, which is where we have past fringe participants participants who have done excellent work, um, be able to um, talk about their experiences and give that like best practice kind of information that we don't know yeah. about. I have a producer friend show, so yeah. I'm not the expert in that, but our artists are, and we'll make sure that you uh, they're accessible to you. Um, and then the last thing that we have within that, um, those resources, as one-to-ones with um, our artist services coordinator, Roddy, or man manager now. Um, <laughs> Roddy is amazing and an incredible resource. And you can book a one-to-one -one time for a 30-minute meeting. And Roddy will be able to talk with uh, with you about anything that you need in regards to the Hollywood Fringe 2025. So if you're like, I need to know where to find a venue, talk to Roddy. Um, and you can request those um, via our newsletter. So we have like a sign-up um, link in our newsletters. Or you could email support at hollywoodfringe.org yeah. and we'll help you schedule. Yeah, the, that email is going out on Tuesday. So uh, secret story time, not really secret, but no one knows this yet. Uh, on Tuesday, we're announcing our 2025 dates. We're giving you the entire schedule of these workshops and town halls that we're talking about. So you can lock them into your calendar now. And there'll be a link to those artist one-to-ones. That way you can schedule that 30-minute chat. Uh, the other thing that's important with those, of course, asking all your questions, preparing your journey, but also if you're just unsure, because uh, we do, we really want people to make an educated de decision about doing Fringe. We don't want to push anyone into this. We mm -hmm. want you to come into Fringe if it's the right decision for you and your work. And so those one-to-ones can also be used just to ask questions to help you decide whether or not Fringe is right for your show at this time. Because remember, you're still self-producing your work. It is vastly cheaper than producing year-round, but you are still responsible for doing all of the things that would be done in a traditional rental. And that means that it might not be the thing for you. That being said, you can do it. Uh, sometimes people say that, see like all that work that they have to do. They're like, Ooh, I don't know if this is for me, uh, because I don't think that I'm like, uh, have these skill sets. You do, they're inside you, but it is a lot of work. And it's about talking about your time management, how much time you have to give, how much extra money you have to give. And we'll go into finances in just a second. Um, but yeah. it's really a personal decision and it's not one that you should make because you're like, well, this is the only way I'm going to make it in theater because it's not true. Yeah, I think, and, and producer, we're going to talk a lot about that in the, today, but also when these workshops coming up. It's a, we look at Hollywood Fringe as a producer's training ground. And so often, uh, we see an artist come to Fringe 
at, with a show and they have a background as an artist, but they don't have a background as a producer. That means, you know, marketing, budgeting, all of the pieces that come to actually getting butts into seats for their show. And Fringe really does act as a producer's training ground. So you walk in, hi, Mike, come on, yeah. and walk in and learn the behind the scenes steps because we really do believe in getting rid of the gatekeeper. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I went to – in a former life, I was a an actress. And I went to school and found out, oh, I have to wait for someone to give me permission to be an artist. That's what I was told over and over again, right? Bullshit. <laughs> and so Fringe really kind of tries to open the gates so that you can receive the tools to become a self-produced artist, if that is something that you are interested in doing. Um, so again, how you participate at Fringe – oh, please come on in. Um, how nice to see you all. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is you create your project. The second thing that you will do is you'll find the venue that suits your show the best. Um, our venues are often, there's like kind of two types of venues that you'll have. You'll have your performing arts centers that might stack a lot of shows, which means that they're able to vastly discount rates and be able to have more of that like community space within your own um, zone. And so you'll have like those, those performing arts centers and that kind of thing. And then you'll have your kind of like one-off venues. So if you're like, you know what? I want extra time. I don't want a 15 minute load out, load in. I want to have a, a more movable space that maybe has two to three shows we have those as well and so it's about coming to our venue panel learning from all of them what kind of space they have to offer what resources they have to offer some of them help you with marketing some of them don't help you with marketing some of them will do like uh like uh, mixers for community members uh, within their spaces some of them will never email you other than the time that they sign your contract and it's about figuring out which of those within your budget and also your goals aligns and is going to have you have the best production possible. Yeah. like And and this is going to be probably one of the earlier things on your list. Don't worry. Not yet. You will have to be like, oh my God, I haven't talked to any venues. That's exactly where you should be because most venues are not ready. <laughs> they yeah. will start booking early next year. Yeah. Um, but I think when it comes to that, getting it in your mind to give yourself the time to tour multiple spaces, to talk to multiple venue managers, because not only like do you want to find the right fit for your show at Fringe, but this is your chance to kind of dive into the like Black Box Theater community here in Hollywood for future runs. You're not going to stop being an artist after Fringe. So like use this as kind of like a speed networking of finding out all of these spaces, because even though a venue might not be right for your show right now, it might be an, in two years when you're doing your own solo run, nothing to do with Fringe, but now you have a venue that's in your back pocket ready to go. And so you are responsible for booking that venue. And we have those venues that often do fringe that are easier to book, but also you can book any venue within our zone, which is what's very confusing for first time fringers is that there is this BYOV option. And that option is more for immersive work or for people who are trying to take on a new challenge. If you're a new fringer, I don't really recommend going down that route unless it's really essential to your work that you have a, a, a less um, vetted space because you will have to become your own venue manager if One you go down hat. that path, yeah. path and it is a lot more work. But if that is something that you're interested in and you're interested in doing something in like more found space, there is that option as well. And we have a whole workshop on how to do that in February. Um, oh, last thing about the venues. Um, venues are just now getting added. Hi, come on in. Um, so like eventually they will all be up on the site, but ignore yeah, it for now. We're going to slowly start adding them. And then in January, we're going to have a more like full list of venues participating. So one budget line is going to be your venue. Another budget line is going to be your registration cost. To use our platform, it is a $300 cost. That goes right back into producing this festival. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about funding. And so I'm going to start that out by saying, should we have a registration fee? Probably not in a perfect world. We have to. There is no way for us to function without that. If you think about it, we have... Um, 400 productions that are under us. We are working with a lot of people uh, and uh, the city gives us $15,000 to do a hundred events. So it is so really <laughs> unfortunate that our system has made it, yeah. that this is the po only possible way for a fringe to exist in our community. Um, that being said, we do have funding opportunities to kind of um, uh, intersperse with some equity there because we know that that is not available to everybody. So let's talk about funding. Funding's fucked. It is fucked for independent artists. It is not in a good spot, especially here in Los Angeles. And I want to start the conversation by saying that. Um, the second thing is, is that Fringe is vastly cheaper than a lot of other times to produce. 50% is about the number we uh, found this year after doing research through our annual report. Your budgeting should look between, and it depends on if you're a solo show up to an ensemble show, the average is about $2,500 to $5,000, depending on that. We have an annual report where you can look through and see what 
people spent last year. Uh, we're very excited to say that 70% of people said that they came within budget. Woo! <laughs> uh, and so it's really about setting that expectation and knowing that some of this does come out of personal pockets. 41% of people last year uh, got money from either grants or from crowdfunding. And I would say that that is a really important step for you to try and do. Yeah. This is an opportunity for you to think about how you would fund the show, whether or not Fringe was a part of it. So for instance, Think about the resources you have within your community. Are there small granting programs that you know of through your neighborhood councils or things like that? Like, for instance, the Hollywood Neighborhood Council, they're not going to fund a print show, <laughs> you know? But do you have maybe something from your own little area? Like, maybe there's, like, something a little bit tighter that you might know, like a, a ch uh, like a church community. Um, also, uh, some people will work with, like, their embassies if they're pr uh, producing multi multicultural work. Mm -hmm. um, they'll work with the embassy. They'll work with these other granting organizations. So it's time for you to kind of look and be like, what is my work about? Who wants to fund it? And how am I going to find them? There are two opportunities to apply for funding through Hollywood Fringe. We have our um, BIPOC and Disabled Artists Fund that is opening um, at the end of this month. Uh, and the application for that will be due in mid-January. We'll have full information about how to apply for that and what the qualifications are, as well as a full panel on like best tips and practices. The second fund that we have opens up in February. Mm -hmm. Yep. February. <laughs> uh, and it is our low income Angelino fund. And that is just like some like little disbursements of $500 grants to help you just like boom, 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 get your work done. It is not meant to completely make sure that you can do French. $500 is not going to make yeah. or break your experience, but it is going to infuse you with a little bit of money right when all of your deposits are due, uh, when your registration fee is due, when those sorts of things are due so that you can just be like, boom, I, I, I have a little up, up yeah. pick. And that will be entirely dependent on how many we are able to give out or is entirely dependent on our uh, fundraising schemes. Uh, so we are a nonprofit. Uh, Hollywood Fringe runs as a nonprofit. And all 25% of our membership donations go directly into the artist fund. So 25% of all the money that we're getting in, in donations are going directly into a fund to disperse once a year to the artists participating in that year's festival. Last year, we were able to give out 24 artist fund stipends. Uh, we would love to give out more every year, but know that we will know that number once we run our first fundraising campaign uh, coming up this month. And uh, the when it comes to, so that's 24, we did 24 of those and we did 10 of our BIPOC and disabled scholarships, which is going to probably be the, the lowest that we'll do this year as well. Um, but when it comes to uh, funding outside of that. I think it's really important that you determine now if you're planning to do a crowdfunding campaign or you're planning to do any sort of thing like that, what's your intention there? Who are you asking? And um, how many more times in the next couple of years are you going to need to make that ask? Because it's about kind of planning your longevity as an artist, not just this one show. And it's about figuring out how you're going to best sell it. It is really a lot easier to sell it to people like I'm doing Hollywood Fringe versus I'm doing a show in a backyard. Give me money, you know? And so there is that legitimacy that you can use. Um, but and it's please use it. Yeah. It, yeah. Let and it, please let it work it. for you. But there is also the the idea that like you want to make sure that you're setting yourself up for, for success after Fringe because our goal is that your journey is just beginning with this show yeah. at Hollywood Fringe and that you're continuing to do that run um, in different in different spaces. Yeah. I'm going to jump into the schedule just because we are running a little light on time. No, we have 50, we have 12 minutes. All right. All right. Fair. Go, go, go. The last, <laughs> the last thing I think we should say is like, why? Okay, why are fair. we doing Oh, this? why are we doing it? Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> we're 12 minutes until our next panel. Um, <laughs> why? Because <laughs> I was on such a roll. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no. Um, why don't you go into the schedule and then we'll, we'll and close then we'll out. And we'll talk about why. Okay, yeah. perfect. <laughs> This is also the first time we've done this in, uh, since last year, y'all. So we're yes. like re-getting our footing. Um, okay, so today you signed up for certain workshops. Feel free to completely throw caution to the wind and change that up today. It's a casual event. If you signed up for Ensemble and decided, you know what, I, like, I want to check out Solo, feel free to make your own decisions as the day progresses. We'll start out with Solo and uh, Solo Work at Fringe downstairs in the Oxford Underground. And writing Ensemble Work for Fringe is going to be upstairs. Here. Right here. Uh, after that, uh, we're going to go from uh, main stage is going to become Immersive 101. So right here, Immersive 101. Downstairs is going to be big ideas, small stages, how to write for the stage you're at. After that, we're going to take a 30-minute lunch break. Feel free to hang around, stay here. If you're going to eat, just please don't eat in the theater spaces. 
Um, but there's also tons of little shops. And you can eat in the lobby. Yeah. Um, so if you need to eat at any point, just go into the lobby. Yeah. There's, there's places to sit and that's a great place too. Totally. Um, and then after that, we're doing speed networking. Uh, that's when you're going to have a chance to chat with more one-on-one. It's going to be like small groups with a veteran fringe producer. Uh, and that kind of, I guess, leads us into the why for me, at least a little bit, is for fringe is such a knowledge share. There's so much information you can gather from your fellow producers. I mean, many of them are sitting in this room right now who have had massive success at Fringe and beyond. What we've seen Fringers do after Fringe has been mind-blowing. And so use that as new producers in the room, as new Fringers in the room. I, we really mean it when we say welcome to the family because mm-hmm. it is a space for you to ask questions. This is not a space where people are worried about how many people are at the table. We want everyone at the table. And the people in the room that are here to offer advice really mean it. And so please take advantage of it. Soak it up because you're going to be those people next year. Yeah. The second reason to do it is if you feel like your work is tour ready, it's a really great opportunity for you to kind of dip your, f- your feet in into the touring circuit. And um, so some shows that come to Hollywood Fringe are already touring. They've already done other festivals. They've already done these kind of preps. And they are. this is one step on a long journey for them. Um, and if your show is one of those, um, we do have an awards program. We do have an industry program. And we do have a um, really great reviewing system where it is pretty much guaranteed that you're going to be able to get poll quotes and these things yeah. um, from, by doing your show um, at Hollywood Fringe. Um, what I would say for newbies is that that shouldn't really be the main driving reason because it is very competitive and it is very hard to get into those sorts of things, but it will expose you to what opportunities are available to you and kind of help you paint a picture for further runs within Fringe or without Fringe. Yeah. And we see everything because, right, like we'll talk more about this at like the first town hall, but fringe is not one specific thing. It, you take what you want out of it. It could be you have a show that, you know, you, you love, but you have no idea how it's going to, you know, resonate to an audience. It could, let's try it out. Let's see what I hear in the audience as I'm performing the show for the very first time with no set, no costumes, you know, very minimal. That's fringe. Or you can have a show that like, hot fucking damn, this show is ready to go to the masses. I'm ready for tour deals and to be seen by industry. Your show is for Fringe. So everything from A to Z is Fringe. It's yeah. just about making sure that your goals align with what your show is. Because uh, we always say two goals. Pick two goals out of Fringe. It can be you know, to be seen by industry and start to make connections to have a further like show run or further opportunity. It could be as simple as to make new friends. Hey, I'm new to the theater community in LA and I don't know anybody. That can be a goal. It can be to make money. I'm going to note money in theater in LA. Not easy. It is doable though. We see it all the time. But if that's your goal, it has to be a focus the entirety of the process, right? Um, or it could be, I mean, what are, there's so many Just good goals. For, for me, like uh, the one that I hear the most is like, I've been trying to do this show forever and I yes. needed a deadline. Mm. I needed a reason. Yeah. I needed a, a a schedule where I could keep up and I could just get this thing out of my brain. Yeah. And I think that that is a really valid goal. Um, I think that another goal of, of doing this, I think, is making sure that you are kind of um, deeply in your artistic practice. It is going to throw you into your artistic practice because you have to have it be a focus for six months. Yeah. You have to be focusing on your artist self. And I think for some people that is enough. Um, yeah. And for you, it's deciding what is enough for you. Oh, please. Hi, can I hi John. Oh, hi. Um, so it's about figuring out, like, do you, is your goal to sell out a show? Is your goal to get a press review? Is your goal to get an award? That's a really lofty goal. If that's your goal, maybe that should be your only goal. And maybe, <laughs> and also maybe not because awards are kind of, you know, like after you get it, what happens? You know, like you can put it on your website, I guess. Um, but like maybe that poll quote can get your, your show further than one award can. Yeah. It's really about figuring out what yeah, what you need for your show to get to the next level, what you need as an artist to get to the next level, yeah. and then utilizing our platform to make that goal happen rather than relying on the platform to make that. Yeah. And happen. ask ask the questions of your fellow producers. Like we said, you're going to constantly be in the room with people who have done this already. And so like today you're going to hear from people who have won awards, people who have sold out their houses, people who have, you know, made a new community uh here in LA. 
ask them you know, like how they did it. Like if your goals align with other producers that you're hearing from, those are going to be your best resources and follow their steps, what they did. We always, the yeah. website hoards information. So use it, look at the website and follow the shows that, you know, you're looking at the awards page. Okay. I have a solo show. I want to win, you know, best comedy. Who won best comedy? Who was nominated? Start to look at their show, how they marketed their show and, and pay attention to those pieces because research is going to get you so far. And I think that one of the big things to realize is the people that do the best at Fringe are going to be the people that are the most passionate about their work, but also build community with each other. Be a good audience member. Go see other people's shows. Talk to people. It is really, if you work by yourself and you're in a tunnel, it's not going to work for you. That's not how our platform works. It really is about that community support and being together. Yeah. What, we do have, we, oh, yeah. what do we say every time? And, I, and it always sounds harsh, but I think it's easy, it's better to give the advice now than at the end uh, when the festival starts in like yeah. three days. But we always say, you know, if I'm meeting someone for the first time halfway through June, I don't understand why I'm not successful. And I've never met them. I'm at everything. Ellen's at everything. That's why you're not successful. You're not yeah. showing up. You're not investing in the community. So they are not investing back into you. Uh, so please, like uh, everyone we'll, in this room, we'll you're do already our, doing it. We'll you're do our due diligence it. too. Don't worry. Certainly. We'll email you being like, I've never seen you at any events before. How are you doing? Are yeah. you like, we will, we will beg you to come and <laughs> utilize what we have. Um, but it is also up to you to take that, that invitation. Yeah. We have five minutes. So I think that we should, um, break for, 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 um, just a second. Yeah. Feel free to use, utilize the restroom. Up here is going to be, uh, writing ensemble work. Downstairs is going to be solo, solo work. Uh, and we'll be back in three minutes. <laughs> 